I'll jump back if there's any developments there in Kiev. Let's bring in retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Pence and a Fox News contributor. Let me just talk uh, briefly, General, about uh, what uh, Jennifer was just talking about. Here's the Dnipro River. Right. Comes down like that and then empties into the Black Sea. Uh, there was that airstrike in the town of Dnipro, uh, which is just north of the area. It's controlled by Russian forces here. That is a major uh, manufacturing city, major industrial city. Of course, Kharkiv is well up here uh, in the north has been uh, surrounded by Russian forces as well. And they are inevitably continuing their move here on a number of fronts uh, into Kiev. What, what stage do you think we are in in this invasion now. Yeah, John, thanks. I think we're heading towards a culminating event, and that's the the taking of Kyiv. Right now, and I said this a couple of weeks ago to you and Sandra, that I thought he was going to work to the east of the Dnieper. He couldn't go to the west of the Dnieper because he didn't have troops to task to do it. And John Kirby kind of said that today when he said almost all of his forces are committed. That means he's going to have to stay to the east, which is about 90 percent Russian speaking, not Russian supporting. Mm -hmm. And then he gets over to the west part of that's about 10 percent. So that's really hostile territory where he's going. And the airstrikes today were intended, I think, to take out his airfields. So the MiG-29s that we're talking about aren't going to show up. Yeah, let me just let me just bring up that map so we could show folks at home. Uh, th this is an area that has been fairly untouched. We've, we've heard air raid sirens in, in Lviv, which is the biggest city. And, of course, Mike Tobin has been doing yeoman work there. But these were attacks in the city of Lutsk and the Devano frankivsk uh, here, which are in the area of Lviv but are still away from that. And we've got some aerial pictures. This this is uh, before the bombing. These are from Google uh, Earth, Google Maps. Uh, this is the airfield in Lutz. Uh, there are what look to me like some Su-24 bombers here, an entire squadron. And then there are either some, some MiGs up here or some Su-27 fighter aircraft. But what do you think was happening here yeah. that would have drawn the uh, the attention of the Russians? Well, this is where you would have put the MiG-29s. You know, if, he, if he got those MiG-29s, that increases his air force, his fighters, by one third, because he's only got about, the uh, Zillinsk has about 60. So you get another 29, 30, you increase it. And that you can always bring in supplies by rail or by, by, uh, by truck or whatever. So you don't necessarily think this is a resupply line? No, I think he's deliberately hitting airfields to, to eliminate the ability to bring in other fighters. And we should have brought those fighters in. I really believe it. But going back to what you said earlier, the culminating event is Kyiv. Kyiv is the center of gravity. He's got to take that. He's made a big mistake. I think Putin made a huge mistake in a couple areas where he's, he, uh, he didn't use what I would call simplicity. He attacked on three fronts instead of one in the south. In the east and the north, he should have stayed on the north and used the principle of war called mass and just taken the key. He's kept, he didn't decapitate the government. Zelensky's still there. He's becoming Churchillian in how he yeah. approaches the world. And, and every time he speaks, he tells Putin, I'm in your face. I didn't run from you. And, and, and here's where the problem is going to come with Kiev when they talk about hitting it. Generally speaking, on force ratios, if you're in the military, you want to have a three to one ratio, three offensive to one defensive. You get into a city fight. You're talking six to ten to one. It'll go block to block, building by building. And he could lose this fight. This is the fight for the survival of Ukraine. If he loses here, Putin loses the war. Yeah. Because that's what happened in Stalingrad in World War II. See, when we talk about the, what will inevitably be the siege of Kiev, uh, is, is he going to turn that into a massive yes. version of Mariupol, which has been decimated? I mean, the city hasn't been leveled, per se, but it has been so unbelievably damaged that it will take years to come back from that. And then there's the impact of the civilian population. We saw targets like that maternity hospital hit. Is that what he's going to do here? Yes, he's going to use old Soviet tactics of mass artillery and rockets. And this is the tragedy. Kiev's a 2,000-year-old city. It's got a population today of about 1.5 million. It used to have 3 million. And we saw the scenes earlier. You're going to see scenes like this, and they're going to be horrific because the artillery he's going to have to bring to bear will be massive, and you're going to see a lot of civilians dying. You know, he's now reaching a point of truly being a war criminal because these are things that we do not tolerate in society, and we shouldn't anymore. And you're going to see it with, with television. It's going to come very clear. But this is the fight. This is the culminating fight. I think this coming week is going to be critical to the survival of Ukraine. If he can hold on, he starts to break so it back to Putin. Otherwise, what you're going to see is a break in between, an, you know, instead of an East Germany, West Germany, you may see a West Ukraine and East Ukraine. But he's going to fight unconventional warfare forces for the rest of his life because they're not going to quit. Not good news for the people there. Difficult days ahead. General, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your analysis. Thanks.